Hello class. I don't know about you, but when it comes to subjects such as racism, I know I get a little bit uncomfortable. I never know what to say, and I feel like I need to be careful with what I say. My words become slurred and it just becomes an awkward conversation. However, it is a topic that is very much relevant to our society, and it's one that needs to be addressed. In order for us to get a better understanding of racism, we need to take a deeper look into coloniality, white supremacy, and capitalism. These factors are still today contributors to the continued ex existence of racism. So let's get started. What is racism? If someone were to ask you what racism is, what would you say? I know I would say a simple word, discrimination. However, reading What is Racism by Gross Fugel, he defines racism as a global hierarchy of superiority and inferiority along the line of humans that have been politically, culturally, and economically produced. Now, that's a pretty detailed answer and an educated response to that question, but what does it mean? It means that due to history and society, the system of racism emerged as a way of classification and as an explanation to why people would be in, would be in power and why others would not be. Gross Fugel brings up the idea that there is a line and there are some people that live above it and some people that live below it. And so the people that live above the line enjoy, you know, full access to human rights and they're considered socially superior as human beings. People, on the other hand, below the line are considered inferior and such rights are denied. So when we talk about things such as European white power, we can't help but link it to coloniality. So back in the day, how did people distinguish people? And that was simply by the color of their skin, whether they be African American or white or any other skin color. Even today, most of the world uses color, as Grossfugel would say, as the dominant and exclusive marker for racism. But consequently, if we use color as the sole marker for racism, for racism, we're basically saying we're basically ignoring any other type of culture and their diversity. So Grossfugel gives an example by how if we look at the colonial history of Ireland, the way the British announced their superiority over them was not by the color of the skin, but instead by religion. So instead of using the racist marker of skin color, they used religion. So another thing that I think is important is that within racism, according to Gross Fugel, there is what's called the zone of being and the zone of not being, um, which he defines as it crosses it, it crosses and cuts multiple power relations such as class and gender all those different kind of classifications on a global scale people who are above the line are called are call, are known as people in the zone of being meaning they experience in, racial privilege instead of racial oppression people below the zone of being experience high rates of racial oppression and, added, and even the added pressure of racism itself. Most of the issues within these zones happen and are experienced in the complete opposite way. For instance, people above the line are usually the powerful and the social elite. So the way they handle problems involve you know, peaceful negotiations and it's usually done with as little problem as possible. People on the other hand, below the line in the zone of not being, experience the clashes between class, gender, and with that, the way they handle problems, there is a high percentage that violence could be involved. So people who are in the zone of being not only have to face the oppression of just those class conflicts and gender conflicts, but the racial part of it as well. So my question to the class would be, we all know that racism exists. And so if you were, per se, to come into contact with someone who didn't know what racism was, how would you explain it to them? Like, would it be in, I don't know, I don't know how I'd answer that, but I would probably say it's a system that was created through coloniality, white supremacy, and from that it was able to divide people and classify them. But I'm curious to see how other students would identify it as well. So my reaction to this reading was kind of surprising
Because I didn't, you know, when thinking about racism, I didn't think of it as this zone of being, that there were different zones, and so that there were, there were lines that divide people. I just thought of it kind of like as an imaginary type of thing. So basically, like, racism affects us all, whether it be directly or indirectly. I think as college students, we have, we have the power to make the biggest change, whether it be educating per a person about what it is and why it's wrong. Um, I think that it's something that needs to be taken seriously and something that can even the playing field. I don't think anyone is better than anyone else due to their race or skin color. I just think it's time that we started accepting it and started to make changes in order to eliminate it. Thanks for listening.